Hello, welcome to another edition of Cal U Connections. My name is Gary Smith, and I'll be your host through this uh, reconnection of people from Cal U. And this show has been 24 hours and 13 minutes in the making. Uh, we got people from every kind of state in the union. Actually, it's two different states. Actually, the distance between all of our guest days, uh, if you take out the guests from Buffalo, uh, there's like eight miles between um, me and one of our guests. But thank you for joining us today on Cal U Connections. We have a jam-packed show today um, with Melissa Dunn. And Lindsay Leonard and ladies, thank you for joining us today um, on this. I don't know this beautiful Tuesday. It's not uh, snowing. It's not raining. So Lindsay, welcome. Missy, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hi, Gary. And nice every to you and um, good to have good to be able to be on. Glad to have you, everybody. And uh, viewers at home, if you see Missy is not sitting very very still. Um, we're having <laughs> some internet issues. I'm on campus today. Had to air some public service programming and missy uh our feed is not coming in but we found this this great picture of her from the internet she hasn't seen it so she'll see it later so um just some of the the, the problems and in, in fun we have in live television production but uh but missy we'll start with you um let's talk a little bit about your connection with cal U. you've been a, a familiar face here at cal U for um we'll just say a few years okay i appreciate you just saying a few years. just a few years because i'm not far behind you <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm actually a two-time alum of the university. I have um, both my bachelor's and my master's degree from there and so my time at the university goes way back. Um, but I've been working as director of student activities and leadership for almost 10 years now. Um, we've been back in Pennsylvania for um, nine years. We just figured that out the other day and so I'm coming up on um, that anniversary with the university. And, uh, of course, you know, my whole family's invested there, um, including my daughter, who is with us all the time. So, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty big connection there. But it's crazy to think that, I mean, you say nine years, because I remember whenever you came back, it seems like it was like two weeks ago. How has it been nine years? How has it been so long? Uh, Sydney was two um, when we came back. And so, you know, she's 11 now, going on uh, 21. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we are, um, you know, we finished Gary's fourth season this past year. And so that's, you know, that's crazy. Time goes by really, really fast. It, and that seemed, that press conference seemed like it was two weeks ago. So where does the, the, the time go? And um, we'll stop going down the sad memory lane here because when I started doing some, <laughs> some math in my head. I'm like, well, how long have I been here? So let's go to, to Lindsay Leonard, who hasn't been around, <laughs> uh, you know, She's much younger than us, and she is out in the world. So, Lindsay, tell us your connection to uh, to Cal U and what you're doing now in, the, in this uh, this wonderful world of ours. Sure. So, I graduated before there was Chick Fil A in the union, <laughs> which I'm still salty about. <laughs> <laughs> so that was December 2015. Um, I definitely feel it. I think this year it hit the most where I was like, wow, it's been quite a few years. <laughs> but I have stayed connected. I've been very um, just grateful for my connections that I'm able to use with the company that I work with now. So it's Neon Entertainment. Uh, we're a college booking agency and I'm a talent agent and I work with Melissa Dunn often. Um, when I was a student, she was my advisor kind of like a mentor, friend, <laughs> second mom. And, um, you know, we've all stayed connected, our entire executive board of students with Missy and with different staff members of Cal U. Um, so the connection's still strong. But I work with Missy now in my career um, almost every day. Wow. Yeah. Missy, you have to be awfully proud because, like, I kind of – it's sometimes funny whenever we see um, – the events going on, you, you almost could, you got, you and your staff could almost pass for, uh, you know, NASCAR Indy 500 pit crews. Cause when there's an event, it's a thousand miles an hour, but it's not just a thousand miles an hour, the day of events. Uh, would it, either one of you want to talk a little bit about the process of, of booking major events? Because I think sometimes people think, Oh, let's just have, you know, a, a band come in. That'll be fun. And, but there's like 40 to 50 steps between that idea and to where it becomes reality. Yeah, I mean, I going back to being proud, it, it, I really am. Um, every single one of my former students is out in the world doing great things, and I feel so fortunate to be connected to all of them. Um, 
it's good for me, especially with Lynn's, because, you know, we were very close when she was a student, and um, I don't think that that has changed at all um, now that she's, you know, working for Neon and has moved on, lived in Buffalo for, you know, so long now. Um, but we still get together when she's here in Pennsylvania, and we get to do things, and we literally do talk every day, I think, <laughs> and whether it's... Um, you know, planning an event or, you know, venting about something in um, our world. She just, she understands what I'm going through and um, she understands what goes on day by day in our office. And so it's great to have somebody that I can say, can you believe this happened? Or, you know, um, it's like Groundhog Day and these things are happening all over again. Um, but I am proud of her, not only, uh, and I hope she talks about this a little bit, but um, not only is Lindsay a talent agent, but she's an entrepreneur, and she has her own little side business, and um, it's been great, you know, personally being able to be involved with that as well, um, and so I am very, very proud of her. When we uh, talk about going through and planning activities, um, Lindsay and I, I'm going to tell a story, but Lindsay and I were planning a major um, event when she was a student, and the the agency that we were working with refused to talk to students, and so Lindsay put them on hold, and she was like, they don't um, want to talk to a student, and I said, well, then tell them that you're my assistant. <laughs> Get back on the phone. <laughs> um, and she did, and I, I, you know, I really feel like we just kind of hit it from that point, and we've always kind of worked in that um now Lindsay we're going to bring you back on um what uh now Missy just said a, a, a lot of amazing things right there that I don't think I even knew but um in your professional world right now what what are some of your responsibilities with with booking talent with you know just give the people at home you know some of the uh the background and what you do in a in a day-to-day -day, uh capacity sure of course so, um, what oh, Missy came in. Okay. So my day to day duties, um, we don't really have a normal day. I am behind a computer at a desk Monday through Friday, nine to five ish. Um, but a lot of what we do is talk to the schools, um, about what they're interested in. So whether it's orientation an alternative to alcohol program, or even a national act, um, like Missy mentioned, a large comedian. We are basically the middle person um, between the school and our act to make sure that the show is successful. So um, we go through all of the prep work, whether it's a semester out or a week out, um, all the way to the day-to-day -day logistics of that. So um, every detail, I mean, whether it's uh, payment or, um, you know, getting people at the door, tickets, anything you can think of logistic wise, we help the school um, have a successful show. So we do have a roster. We work with um, our students, or I'm sorry, our <laughs> artists on our roster, as well as also um, deal with the artists outside that are more of the celebrity national status. That's awesome. And, and it has to be exciting for you on a day-to-day -day basis to, to kind of live your dream. I would say, say, because like I said, you, or you mentioned that, you know, you were heavily involved here at Cal U and, and now get to go out and, and do that. But let's back up a little bit and talk about, you know, those times when you're here on campus before Chick-fil-A, which, you know, that's a great way of, of marking time. I think everyone on the show should do that. They should say what was in town whenever uh, they were freshmen, what was in town whenever they left, and what's what do, are you envious now in town? Um, but when you were a student and even um, in high school uh, trying to figure out what you want to do in life, what, what kind of led you down this path? Sure. So I think looking back on it, I always liked the behind-the-scenes uh, seat at an event. Um, so whether that was planning my prom in high school or, um, you know, all the way into kind of figuring out how concerts work and planning the meet and greets. Um, I remember even like being excited planning family holiday get togethers. So I think it's always been ingrained in me. Um, it's definitely a pinch me moment. I will say I got emotional when I did my first, uh, 
I was a middle agent for my first concert at Cal U. We were in the convocation center and I was a student when the convocation center was being built. So coming from like that student perspective to now having this as my career, um, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's tremendous. And, and we have Missy back, and I think we have Missy with live video now for now. Like I said, the Internet is a mystery, mysterious thing in these day, this day and age. But, um, Missy, just talk a little bit about, like, what it's like because, I mean, you work with students every day. I work with students every day. I mean, we're, we're blessed that we get to work with such wonderful students, and that's kind of like what this show is, just kind of connecting. But what – like, somebody like Lindsay, what's it like seeing someone with that energy and get-go, like, get involved in, like, almost like that proud uh, parent moment of seeing them like from a freshman to, you know, where she's at now four or five years into her professional career. Well, I mean, it, you know, Lindsay, it's really kind of hard for me to describe because Lindsay and I have been through a lot and, um, you know, just uh, the connection there is just very strong and um, both personally and professionally. And um, it's kind of, it's kind of cool for me because I get to go to these concerts to plan our event or um, conferences to plan our events. And um, we get to see each other and to, for me to watch her, you know, do something that she's always wanted to do um, and, you know, kind of be out there and being excited about it is, is really kind of exciting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's hard for me not to get emotional about Lindsay just because like I said, we are so close. Um, you know, and so when you say proud, I don't even really think that that, that word does anything justice. Um, and it, the other thing that I'll just say, though, is such an asset for Cal U to have her in the position that she's in. Um, because, again, she knows everything that's going on. She knows how we work. Um, she knows Larry. She knows Leanne. You know, she knows mm -hmm. Dr. Pernardi. And um, she really learned um, everybody's innuendos when they were here so she'll literally think about like hey i think larry will like this program for the student center or you know hey i think this would be really good for diane to do for you know something like that and so just her knowledge of all of us and the mission of the institution and how student activities board works and how we like to do things um, is just so helpful for us when we're planning programs the other agents are really jealous because i have moved you know, 95% of my programming to Lindsay's, um, to Lindsay's company and, you know, her boss better keep her because if he doesn't, then I'll be moving 90% of my business to some other company, you know, and so, um, you know, it, it's really cool. Well, let's talk about how that's a, that's a great uh, jumping off point. Um, what's the process from like a little bit more, cause we kind of talked about a little bit, but like from the beginning, like, to the end of a show um because we, we kind of a little we both touched upon it a little bit but um but like when you're in a meeting or whatever how, how does it that work for like on the student activities uh end of things if people don't know and then taking that idea to professional agency now with Lindsay. so um if anybody knows me they know that my students really drive what we do um i've always stated that i'm there to sign the contract and make sure that they don't get themselves in any trouble um, and keep everybody on task, but they make the choices on the entertainment that we have. And, um, you know, sometimes I don't like it, but <laughs> if it's something that they want to do, we kind of move forward and go. So joining student activities board is the first step. Um, coming to our meetings on Thursdays at five o'clock, um, is really important because we literally go through and talk about, um, every entertainer that we're going to have from daytime, to nighttime entertainment, to stuff up on the campus, um, to things that we're going to do at our athletic events. Um, and they kind of pick and choose how they want to do their schedules. And then what we do is um, we preview all of our talent at the APCA conference, which is the Association for the Promotion of Campus Activities. Um, and all the agencies are there with um, talent. And my students just get to see like little 10 minute um, showcases or 10 minute clips of what they're doing and then they choose things from there um, and then I let the student do the initial negotiation of the contract when possible um, so they'll talk to the agent and they'll talk about dates and you know travel and how much the contract is going to be and when we would want to have them 
And then um, that's kind of where Lindsay comes in. And that's a great time to bring Lindsay in. So when once you get the contract uh, on your desk or the ideas, what what are the steps uh, that you take to ensure that a it's a it's a good fit for for you and your company and also the client? Sure. Yeah. So we then go to the larger managements and agencies. So whether that's um, a CAA, um, an ICM, we contact them and communicate what the price is, if that artist is available um, or whatnot for a larger scale example. If it's a smaller scale, um, maybe an act on our roster, for example, we would just check the availability, contact our artist, and um, we'll eventually help with the contract, either create our contract internally and then export it to the university. Um, every university is a little bit different. So that step um, kind of just varies, but we're very flexible. Um, we're a very consistent company um, and we take a lot of pride in that, in that contract process. Um, from there, this is kind of the fun part. The students usually reach out to me or the advisor and they're talking about how to promote it, what the act may need, what's in um, their rider, do we have the correct tech for this event, um, all the bullet points to just make that event as successful as possible for them, but also just a learning experience as well. I mean, when I was in that student's shoes, this was like a fun phone call or text message or email with, um, the position that I'm in now. So I never take it for granted. <laughs> um, I always make sure, you know, it's a learning process, but it's also fun and um, make sure they're getting all the information they need and the artists would then show up on campus. Um, I don't usually attend campus unless it's a larger national act, um, but I'm there in spirit and then we do a, a show follow up and, um, and whatnot, so. That's awesome. and. You know, we've had about 15, 16 minutes of fun questions. Now it's time to start getting to the hard-hitting questions that the people really want to know. Because um, obviously, as we mentioned, you know, you know, the entertainment field, the, the activities field, there, there's, it's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, it goes off without a hitch. But, you know, there's some times that we'll just say events. Uh, this happens all the time in sports broadcasting um, that we do. A lot of times there's some things that uh, happen that make you remember events more than uh, – other events, so either, either fun things or, or some things that go wrong. So, uh, we'll start with you, Missy. In, in your time here at Cal, and even before, what are some of the either you can say either your favorite event here or like a favorite story of something that you know? Hey, the act was supposed to start at nine, and they forgot a stage. Any funny stories from uh, your 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 uh, experiences here at Cal? Um, I have a lot of them, and it's not, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just sort of pick the highlights. You know, we uh, we had Dan and Shay in concert, and that was um, Lindsay and I's probably biggest event. You know, we had them right before they blew up, and um, that was Lindsay's forward thinking of knowing her music and really knowing what was going on. I hadn't heard of them prior to Lindsay saying, like, hey, I want to have them in concert, and so... Um, but that was huge. And we had it in steel. So think about not having the communication center. And um, we had it in steel hall. And um, we were expecting like this little country duo to show up and do kind of like an acoustic show for us in steel. And they rolled in at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, um, full tour bus, full band set up, ready to go. And we did it. And um, we only blew one $800 speaker in the process. Um, we got a lot of gray hairs <laughs> through it. Um, but that was like one of those things that when you talk about planning in one direction and literally having to change and going in the complete opposite direction um, when they showed up, I think that that was you know, one of our biggest things um, was that concert. Lots of fun memories from that show. It was the longest day of our lives. Um, you know, they, they rolled into campus really early in the morning and at 3 a.m. I was begging them to leave. <laughs> so it was um, it was a really, but it was amazing. And it's one of, in my whole career that I will always remember. 
Um, we've had some other fun stuff happen. You know, Steve-O was naked on stage in Steel, and um, I had a... <laughs> but who hasn't um, been? I mean, really, it's County. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. right of passage. So common. So common <laughs> on our um, But, like, that was something. He got arrested um, prior to our show, and so, you know, it was one of those things where I just kept saying, this one's risky, this one's risky. Are we sure? Are we sure? And um, when they let me know that, you know, he was protesting SeaWorld and had been arrested and that some court dates could conflict with our show date, um, I was, you know, kind of like, are you freaking serious? But that's exactly how it worked out. But he was there and um, he did an amazing 90 minute show. I never thought he was getting off stage. Um, and, uh, you know, he's been great. So those were those were probably two of my most memorable shows during my time at the university. Now, Lindsay, we're going to transition to you. Uh, same question, either, and, and you can either say, you know, some of your favorite moments or memories or memorable experiences here at Cal, or uh, if you can talk about some fun stuff that maybe people might not know from the professional world. Because, I mean, I know there's different headaches at different levels of, uh, so maybe, you know, a headache here at Cal, you might not be register in the in you know in, in neon entertainment but you know what are some of the the things that stand out to you in your career sure so i am just holding it in trying not to laugh really hard because i remember both of those <laughs> examples <laughs> in particular and just it, you know when you're in events um you just go with the flow and just try really hard and that's kind of all you can do day of <laughs> Um, but I think there's a few, I, I guess as a student, um, this is something that I share with some of the students I talk to now, the student programmers. I was a daytime chair of student activities at first, and I had planned a super exciting, I worked so hard on this, um, a homegrown tie-dye event. And I got on the turf and I had all the buckets there and all the dye and I had pre-ordered the shirts with our logo and we did all this marketing. And then I realized I didn't have any water. I didn't know where the water source was. And, and you know, I know that small scale, but I'm sure students that will listen to this, um, student programmers will definitely understand. <laughs> um, larger scale, I mean, we've had We've had artists on our roster um, show up to campuses and the campus overbooked or forgot that it was happening, um, didn't have a room for them. And the amazing thing with student activities professionals is there's such a, I don't even know if it's taught, but I think it's out of experience, but there's such a drive to do whatever they need to do to make it happen. And, um, I would say that's probably the most unique uh, thing about events in working with with college campuses. Um, and I, <laughs> we've never had an event totally fail um, just because of that mentality. So I've never had, you know, if I've had an artist show up without a stage, they perform in the lobby of the student center. Um, and that's what's, what's really cool about this job. So I don't have any crazy stories. We've had some really crazy green room requests um, that. Oh, you gotta, you gotta uh, elaborate. <laughs> What's the craziest green room request you've had that you can say on, on camera? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say as of late, um, Missy will know who this was. We had a, a ginger root. Um, request that kind of ran us around town at California. <laughs> um, uh, so that was odd, but it's not as odd anymore. Um, Popeye's chicken. Um, you know, there is the whole, we only want green M&Ms. Um, it's true. <laughs> There's a lot of truth behind it, mostly for the fact that they want the client to read the rider requirements. Um, there's an artist that requests a, a pony and you have to get creative and, um, provide a stuffed animal pony or something like that. So it is humorous for the most part, but it does allow, um, kind of makes anyone who's reading the rider look into it a little bit more. So, so you're okay. saying, you're both saying you can't find ginger root easily in California, just like a quick fill or, or anywhere. It just can't happen. API pulled through, I think, right? 
Yeah, we got it. Um, <laughs> it we we did. Listen, one thing that I will say, and the whole thing, the the word that keeps popping into my mind is flexibility. And when my students hear this, they're gonna crack up laughing because. We go into any big show and I just tell them, as long as you stay flexible, everything's gonna be fine. And so when I told that young lady, get in that SAI van and go and do not come back until you have fresh ginger root organic um, for this artist's drink, <laughs> um, you know, and she did, she showed back up with it and uh, you know, wherever it came from, it's where it came from. and. Um, but we did really well. You know, those rider things are really cool, but like on our campus, as soon as we say we have sushi and Chick-fil-A, they go right out the window and everybody wants sh sushi and Chick-fil-A. So, um, you know, we're always, we're always able to provide that um, at the last minute, which is usually pretty good. That's awesome. And that, I think that's probably the key and like, especially in any kind of entertainment biz is business or industry is to stay flexible. Like you said, because not every event they're probably in the history of entertainment have been maybe three events that have gone on without a hitch. Um, because there's always something last minute that, that will come up. Uh, speaking of last minute, we're in the last couple minutes of our show. Time flies. Um, but any, uh, any words of encouragement or, or, or wisdom that either one of you impart on anybody that's watching this that may want to get into, um, the activities or entertainment field? Sure. You want me to start, Matt? Yeah, go okay. ahead, Lindsay. Yeah. We'll start with Lindsay. That'd be great. So I would say um, Cal U has a really unique, amazing thing, uh, for lack of better words. It The staff at Cal U allows such experience for their students that, and I know I'm biased, but I don't see um, often with other, other universities. And providing so much experience outside of the classroom um, is just awesome and definitely where I found so much of my experience from. Um, some encouragement, I would say go get that experience. <laughs> Network, plan meeting times in Missy's office or in Gary's office. <laughs> um, you know, go ahead and, and get that experience from the staff and at events and um, just get involved as much as you can. And you never know when you'll be able to apply what you're learning in the classroom um, outside of the classroom as well. And I think it really sets you up for a successful career outside of college. That's awesome. Missy, any words of uh, encouragement or uh, wisdom that you'd like to impart? Yeah, I mean, what I would just say is just get involved in something. It doesn't matter what it is, um, because there are so many of us, so many people like me on our campus that really care about our students and want to give them that. Um, all of my former students and my current students right now will say, um, sometimes it's tough love, you know, but that's just because I know that you can do it and um, you're going to come out of it. A, a better person and when you get into the real world is really the kind of times where you know our students will reply back to us and say oh now I know why you did that. or now I know why you know you you taught us the way that you did and so um, that's one of the the biggest things for me is to make sure that everybody walks away with a positive experience um, I give my students a lot of freedom and um, like I said, I just kind of stand behind them and make sure that, that they don't fall and putting yourself out there and allowing yourself to kind of get involved in something on campus um, is really, really important. That's awesome. Well, words from two of the best right now. And uh, I'd like to thank you ladies for taking time out of two days, not just one day, two days to uh, to get this done. And real quickly, I'm going to tease all the social media that we have uh, on the the, the media services area, but uh, Missy, any uh, social media you'd like to plug? Because I know we're trying to stay connected with everybody and it seems like the online uh, ways to do it. Any any um, any uh, social media you'd like to plug to keep everyone yeah, in the know? Definitely follow Student Activities Board on um, Instagram's our platform right now that we seem to be pushing everything out on. We're going to see some new newsletters and some virtual experiences that you can have. So if you can follow SBCALU at um, on Instagram, that's where we are. And Lindsay, any any uh, any social media or any place they can find uh, you or Neon Entertainment or anything like that? 
Sure. So our website is neon-entertainment.com. That has everything, including our blog. We're also on Facebook and Instagram and pretty active on there as well. We're really pushing our virtual programming right now. Um, for me personally, Missy mentioned, I do have a personal business. Um, I'm a paint teacher from afar. So if you're interested, I'm on Instagram as paint social with Lindsay as well. And I'm offering some free paint classes right now to keep you busy while you're at home. That might have to be another show because I think uh, if anybody needs laughter, me trying to take a paint class, I am uh, horrible at art. I, I it's so good. It. They're so fun. They're so fun. <laughs> well, I might, hey, we, we might have to, to book that for a future show. But ladies, thank you for taking time out of the days. Um, stay safe out there and hopefully we'll all come out on the other side of this with the uh, hitting the ground running. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. So for my guests, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on Coyote Connections. Uh, I'm going to put up our social media right now. If you have any ideas or suggestions for or for future shows, uh, hit us up on any of these social medias. Uh, see, Cal UTV, CUTV, California University Television. You think I'd be able to read that off the screen. I made the graphic. But that's our Facebook page. Our Twitter is at CUTV underscore PA. Uh, our friends over at the Cal Times, at Cal Times, they are doing a wonderful job of updating what's open, what's closed, and, and kind of taking a visual uh, look at what's going on. There was a great photo uh, journal or photo essay that uh, Jeff Helsel did last week of uh, uh, Cal U in California, PA, kind of um, with nobody in town. And then our friends over at the radio station, 91.9 FM, WCAL, they've put together a an interactive playlist at their Spotify account, which is WCAL Power 92. So feel free to add any songs to that because I have a lot of REM and a couple of my friends are saying there's too much REM on that playlist. So for my guests, thank you for this edition of Coyote Connections and we'll see you next time.